Starbase Columbus opened in 1992. I think my dad and I were here uh, opening day. We were really, really thrilled to have like a local Star Trek sci-fi store. It's not just a store. It's really a way of thinking about life that happens to have a store to raise money for people. The store started out so small and so intimate, and then it gradually grew. We've got a little bit of everything here, you know, Star Wars, Star Trek, Babylon 5, Doctor Who, you know, we've got a lot of, we got a lot of neat stuff here, so it's a, it's a great place to come. There have been a lot of really interesting little events that we've had at the store. One of the really cool things that we did is we became a post office for a day. The original um, Star Trek stamp, the Enterprise, came out. So Starbase was a post office for a day to launch that stamp. Robin Curtis, who was in Star Trek III, She's been to the store. Jonathan DeLarco, who played Hugh Borg. Mark Orkren, who created the Klingon language. He's been here too. The most turnout that we ever had at the store is our beloved Jimmy Dewan, who played Scotty in Classic Trek, came to the store and um, did autograph signing for free. He signed for everybody that came through the door all day long. We had about 5,000 people through the store on that day. We've had our good times, we've had bad times. Of course, last year when we thought we were gonna close, it was kind of disheartening. We had great sales and great times and the store was really thriving. And then sales and the store started getting into more and more trouble. We were kind of hanging on by the skin of our teeth, trying to you know, keep this business float. You know, not only were we gonna to go to get our stuff, but you know, where we're gonna to go to meet, you know? Because, you know, like everybody has said, you know, we're all sci-fi nerds and sci-fi geeks. There's not very many places you can go and be accepted that way, you know? Uh, to, you know, come and dress like I am right now. It was hard to consider, you know, our world without Starbase. So then finally, when Things were looking really, really bleak, and we were probably going to close. The Federation found out. I love my chair. When I bought Starbase, um, the chair came with it, which is I, I demanded the chair come with Starbase. I'm um, Russ Hasledge, president of the Federation, which is short for the International Federation of Trekkers. Um, Gene Roddenberry and I started the Federation back in 1983 we started working on it. His idea was that the true ultimate Star Trek fan club should be one that does in the real world what the crew of the Enterprise does in every episode of Star Trek. And what they truly do is go places and help people. The whole idea was that there are some charities out there who also have retail stores. And the proceeds from the retail stores help fund the operations of the charity. And that's what we've done here. A lot of charities, you'll give a dollar, but only 60 cents goes to what you were donating for because they have operating costs. Now we don't have to have an operating cut off the top of donations because Starbase helps fund that, allowing 100% of donations to humanitarian funds to go to people in need. We send people and material and funds uh, all over the world. Here in Columbus, this spring we're going to be um, helping refurbish a house for a, for a family that just can't, and the city is saying, fix it up or get out, so we're going to fix it up for them. Um, and that's what we do all over the world. All the chapters decide the, the needs of their area, and the Federation supports them and gets them whatever they need to do that. The addition of this being part of a nonprofit that actually goes to help people, um, it, it really is special. Uh, because that's really the ideal of Star Trek. It's about helping people. It's about people coming together. And you really feel that here. People come in, they're buying stuff, but they're talking to you about the culture of Star Trek. I'm a child of the 60s. I grew up um, watching Star Trek when it originally aired. And even though I was kind of young and didn't fully understand it, it was a lot of social commentary embedded in that science fiction. And as I grew older, you know, I could go back and see 
what Gene Roddenberry was trying to do, and I've just always believed in that philosophy of, you know, a better future. Um, and in order for us to get there, we have to start loving each other and caring about each other. Most of our members are Star Trek geeks. We have a few people who know nothing about Star Trek but like the public service. Um, and if you're feeling geeky, this is the place you should be. We have this out of the world fest every year in which we host all kinds of different sci-fi clubs. The clubs come in and they do different activities to raise money for their various different charities. We've done like the, the food drive for the Mid-Ohio Food Bank several times. We've done raffles and um, drawings, tickets, auctions to um, raise funds so that we could donate not only food but money. It's just what we need to do to help other people. I can't stand to see anybody not have food, not have um, just the basic necessities. Starbase is not just a place where you come and shop for sci-fi stuff. It's more about a community and a sense of um, a sense of family, a sense of belonging. We're accepting of everybody here. And that's, the, you know, no matter shape, size, sexual orientation, religious beliefs. Everybody is accepted and everybody is made to feel comfortable. And pretty soon, you keep coming back, you, you become part of the Starbase family. We want to make this a fun destination to come to. You can come by and get your picture taken in the chair. And if you want to shop, that's even better. So, you know, we want people to come. If you're coming through Columbus and you're a Trek fan, you got to go to Starbase. I love this place and I hope it's around for a long time to come.